Welcome back to Mechanorn, the old regular shows we got here. I got Sam Star with me. Hey, hey. And Irene's here as well. Hey. Yep, and we're going to jump right into Heavy Object, and uh, we're going to try to speed maybe this this one along, but we'll see how, how it goes. But Heavy Object Episode 5, Tom Thumb races through the oil field, battle to blockade the, the Volter 2. Again, we're doing the same thing last week, the whole fight on water. And uh, yeah, so I guess we're jumping to right, right to with, uh, I guess they thought they blew it up. I guess that's where it ended last week, but they didn't, obviously. <laughs> Not going to beat it one, one episode, I don't think. But so the, yeah, I guess Javier and Quinn get rescued, but they decide to jump back in it because they notice Melinda's having trouble with uh, you know, fighting the uh, tri, I guess try the tri carrier thing. Tri core. Yeah, tri core. So. What you guys think of that? And I think that was kind of ridiculous how they got saved and they went back into the fight. <laughs> well, I mean, this episode proves once and for all, Melinda is fucking useless. I'm right. giving up on that girl. I, I mean, she's she's worse than like Daphne and and Scooby Doo. It's like you at least uh, she does she something. <laughs> at least Daphne actually does something. She contributes. What right. Anna Barbera burns? Ouch. <laughs> I mean, I was watching. I mean, when she's fighting, you know, you would think they would have taught her a long time ago that you're supposed to lead the target on and then shoot him. Yeah, you know, like, gets defeated yeah. every time. Yeah, she only comes in for a few minutes to give help, and then the help does ends up actually getting her in trouble, and so the boys have to go and save her. Right. Every time, this then, is like the third. This is the second time now. In fact, for her getting rescued, this is probably like the fourth, fourth. time. <laughs> yeah, fourth or third, We're somewhere around there. We're getting on the high numbers with her every, every episode oh. by episode, almost. And but I mean, I, yeah, I thought it was funny how the the tri core was just aiming for the guns. You know, well, it was not like yeah, funny. Well, it's a tactical move that no, apparently it, Melinda is incapable of doing. Yes, yeah, so, I mean it was a smart move by the enemy side for them to it, do that to take the guns out. It's kind of funny, like if, if you see the if you see the posters that are out for this or like the image art, it has Melinda like front and center in, uh -huh. in most of them, and it has like Quinn and Javier in the background. Like they're gonna be supporting cast, but right. it's really the other way around. I mean, <laughs> that's a marketing the trick. That is a marketing trick. She's, I... she's not even that important. She's just like sitting there. She's uh, not like doing anything special. She's sitting in the front of the post, just sitting. Yeah. And like you could have replaced mm. that with Javier and uh, and Quinn running around with guns or something. You know. Yeah. I mean, I'm still thinking that of the, the mindset that she is still un inexperienced. I mean, it's not obvious given here. She hasn't defeated any objects since the show started. So it's like, you know, I'm still thinking she's just a novice. She has no idea what the hell she's doing. So. I mean, this episode proves that my plan of engineering Ninja Squad is a golden plan. Because <laughs> all you need is a scuba, scuba gear, like a pound of C4, and a bunch of mines, and you can blow up literally anything. Because, I mean, I... They went into excruciating detail about all the engineering details that I don't pretend to remember or care about. Uh -huh. I mean, this show has one strength, and it's of all the mecha shows, and it has the best strength. There are some really good explosions in this show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's. Yeah, that is give the heavy object's that. only strength, it is heavy object's best strength, and at least they know how to capitalize on that, because you do get that, like, Primal rush. It's like, oh yeah, blow up bigger, blow up stronger. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And I mean, uh, there's some other stuff in this episode, like um, Captain San is uh, he's got uh, wardrobe malfunctions. Ha 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 ha. And um, uh, uh, ooh, uh, ooh. anything else happened? Quick, help me out here. Um, <laughs> let's um, see. I mean, they besides Quinn doing his underwater thing with the net. Trying to mm -hmm. just, you know, use the net again, which came back up again. It's like, okay, I guess we can use that again. But, and then obviously, like you said before, C4, you know, this show is, that's why I said in my, my notes on the bottom, that it needs more C4. It's pretty much, they're going to be like running the market on C4 in this show. <laughs> you know, well, no, they, they had that specialized it. bomb last time. They were like, yeah. oh, we have this special stuff we could use that smart bombs or something. I don't yeah. know what they were. Yeah, and then like I, I saw you know here about 
him using the same dialogue as last last time. Yeah. Pretty uh, much the same, yeah. I mean, it's... I was like, if you're going... It, it's okay to talk about the show and, you know, to say that the objects are man-made so they uh-huh. can defeat it. But you... The thing is, he starts declaring the same dialogue over and over again. Like, it's, you know, the first time he's ever said it. And he's the first time he's ever declared, we shall go and save the princess. Should we go and leave her alone? I'm like, we just went over this. Why are we saying this again? Right. And Come on, guys. I did think it was kind of weird. You know, like, yeah, how ha- have you kind of against Quinn going back in there? Yeah, and to it's save like her. The, what, they was like, play the same things over and over. Again. But I was like, but for the second or third episode, wasn't he worried about? Javi was worried about Melinda, so it's like, does he not care if she gets killed, or he's just like, eh, whatever. <laughs> it just it's seems like weird I've, for me. I've made this exact same critique before, and I'll make it again. The writing on the show is trying to set it up as an underdog story. Oh yeah. But at the same time, it's completely blatant that nothing on Earth is cooler than Havia than Quen. Not Havia. Havia sucks. Nothing on earth is cooler than Gwen. So it's like, but that's not really a good underdog story. It's the same problem you see with countless um, light novels like freaking uh, Mahoka. It's like, right. the guy is the greatest at everything, but he sucks at this one thing, so uh-huh. he's discriminated against. But it's like, no, he's yeah. the most awesome guy at everything. Don't try to write the story like he's an underdog. No yeah, one the, the, yeah. it, and it's bad <laughs> writing. Yeah, that's, the yeah a lot of shows do that, yeah. They're trying I mean, to say like, oh man, these things are so awesome. There's uh-huh. no way he can ever win, but he wins every time. Uh-huh. It's not fun to it's not fun to listen to, and it's boring. Right. I mean, I kind of want the enemy team to start doing the same. Where they have two people on the ground that are like, you know, watching the area. That'd like, be super interesting. I don't like, think like that's have you. Well, I, I think yeah. we're going to we're going to get a villain eventually because if. If, at least in the OP, they promise right. that there's going to be a villain. There's this guy who keeps popping up in the OP. And they show that girl cool. in the flight suit, so yeah, maybe she might become... Yeah, another girl going to show up. Right. she's probably going to be useless, too. Right, probably. But at least the guy might have some use. Right, that's, what, that's so what I'm hoping they do. They... I'm hoping something will happen. Right. Because I, I, this whole, you know, little guy beats the big machine it's cool and it's and they are funny and from what i've heard that the actual story is is supposed to be more like a buddy cop thing like right. you got these two guys who are just you know it, it, it's like murtog and, and and oh gosh what was the other guy's name from lethal weapon uh, <laughs> I, no idea. I forgot his name <laughs> but yeah i'm just, I'm no, just saying yeah a yeah. buddy cop? are they supposed to be arresting the objects what the fuck does that mean <laughs> well, no, well i mean like, like how they know. act yeah, how they act. Okay, two, okay. You know, right. Which, they have a fun... Guys, go out and do stuff. Which I, I can see them doing that. that, but uh, a lot of people find that their dialogue to be, to be kind of annoying when they're just spending like well, 90% of the time just screaming at each other. When they're objectifying so, their um, superior officer, it's really oh, funny, right, Irene? Well, I hate that. she kind of brings it upon herself. I mean, she's the one kind of enticing them. I... You know, so it's kind of, she's kind of more to blame on that, I would think. Okay, 85 just says that she brings it upon herself is going down a very slippery slope. But she does do this weird... And I blame the writers more than her character. Oh, so, yeah, I mean... Because it's like, you make this fan service that even... I've seen even a lot of just regular guys, you know, who usually like fan service and that, you know, are into the whole thing. And they're even like, it, this is really out of place and weird. It's just jilted it feels like it's in the wrong spot her being in a in a airplane just sitting cross legged for no obvious reason eating a hamburger like that and then she goes and takes a shower in a helicopter who takes a shower in a helicopter <laughs> i'm sorry right. i've been in a helicopter helicopters don't aren't don't sit that you know still you cannot take a, sh- a, good, a shower in a helicopter like that right i mean i've never been in a helicopter I mean, I, I, I feel more that's like used to like bridge like some time gap, whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's stupid and random. I, I completely agree. And I don't where's find that. Where's the water go? Seriously, when the water comes down, where does it go? <laughs> right, yeah, I mean. Where's it come from? <laughs> yeah, I don't understand it either. I mean, that to me it seems a little, it seems a little from random. the ocean, you're flying. Oh, Irene, do I have to spell this out for you? <laughs> you have a, you have a, you have a tube that you're flying across the ocean. <laughs> right, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, I can I can agree. It was just it was kind of thrown in there, just like a a thing. That I means like each episode has to have some kind of fan service quota they have to fill. 
And then she literally oh. duct tapes it to the wall. And I'm like, well, yeah. the duct tape's not going to work because you have water all on it. <laughs> yeah. It's going to yeah, peel off. They're peeking on her. And then they're, and then earlier, like when she's on the boat, you can see through her dress and all that bullshit. And it's like, man, again, the show has, ex- this show happened. can offer you explosions so- that are really cool. And there's not a single other strength in this show. Right. Well, I guess we can kind of wrap it up there on that one. Uh, any last things to say? Nope. All right. Uh, just oh, what? Who? Who wants to guess what the next one is? What? What's the next one? It's, oh, it's Ant and Grasshopper. That's right. Right. They're probably gonna be in the desert, I assume. Since yeah, they're the, going to yeah. Oceania, which is Australia territory. Oh, okay. I can't wait to see Melinda get her ass kicked the next time. <laughs> oh yeah. Or be safe. Yeah, you should say. <laughs> well, what ha- one has to happen first for her 